Hello, hello, hello. Thanks for getting to the mat today. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about our movement on the earth, whether we're walking down a road or out to the garden or we're taking a hike with friends and how we relate to the earth. Um, uh, I'm not talking a huge philosophy here. I'm, I'm talking our muscles, like our, how are we interacting? And what I find is most of us, if we're not training ourselves to do something different, are kind of letting gravity take us, we're kind of schlumping along. <laughs> um, and that doesn't work really well for our bodies in the long haul. One, um, we're certainly not upping our metabolism and our energy level and our cardiovascular effort the way most of us would want to do when we're out moving along the earth. Um, <clears throat> but also, what happens muscularly or doesn't happen is really important. So first of all, um, letting gravity take us means that we probably aren't really engaging some of the, the low body that we want to be. And it makes us safe, actually. It increases our balance. Um, we're much more likely to be able to adjust if you know something unexpected happens, we uh, place our foot in a, a bit of a hole or what have you. So what I'm talking about here is walking in such a way that in a sense you're thinking about pushing the earth away. Um, a lot of us also tend to be a little bit kind of angled forward, like maybe watching the ground uh, for potholes or anything else. But I think it also just becomes habit. Uh, even when we're walking on a predictable smooth surface, a lot of us will be kind of oriented downward. And so what I wanna do is practice being upright. And I think of rooting and reaching away from the earth, but in such a way that the heart is open, the shoulders are kind of down the back, and that we're then pushing the earth away and striding forward versus kind of letting gravity take us and kind of just keeping ourselves from falling forward. Which actually is, again, the interesting thing is that by looking down because uh, we feel unsafe and we want to make sure we're careful, actually puts our head and shoulders forward of our center of gravity and makes us more likely to pitch forward if we were to fall. So it's a, it's a new thing to practice uh, for a lot of us to be upright and if you need to, to simply let your gaze drop down to the ground to kind of scan for obstacles or dangers and so on. So we're just gonna do some stuff today that's about igniting um, those parts of the body. So we're gonna actually start standing up. <clears throat> and I'm inviting you to just join me in kind of a, a squat, essentially. Our feet are just turned at a natural angle. If you were to jump and, and land, that's your natural angle. So they're not way out, they're not way in or straight. And so first of all, just let's warm up slowly these knee and hip joints, see what's happening in your thighs today. Yeah, so just exploring. And remember that when we come to the more active uh, movement in a moment, you don't have to do it at a certain pace and you don't have to go super low or what have you. Even coming into a slight knee bend and doing the push will be effective. But for now, just warming these knee and ankle joints, getting synovial fluid in there. And again, it gives us a chance to hear like, hmm, how's my body doing today? Uh, what needs some care or consideration? All right, so we're gonna get a little more active here. We're gonna add arms to it. So I'm gonna have my hands like this. And as I come down into a squat like so, my hands are gonna be up. And then as I push the earth away with my legs, I'm also gonna pretend I'm pushing it away with my hands. So when you're ready, join me. Inhaling, kind of squat down, hands come up. Exhaling, push. And as you push, then hold at the upper end of that push. Feel these thigh muscles squeezing towards the bone, your elbows in towards your ribs. You're really wanting to straighten those arms so that you feel those triceps click in. Continue, please. This is another part of the body that often stays kind of hyper bent and never fully extends. And so we get overly tight in the bicep and not strong enough in the tricep. So squat, hands come up. Inhale, exhale, push the earth away. And I'm gonna add my ujjayi breath. I don't know if you can hear that. That small throat contraction. And if you can, add a soft connection of the tip of the tongue at the roof of the mouth. Soft jaw. 
so even though we're engaging deeply in all these muscles, we're in effort we want to be relaxed in the parts of us that don't need to work like our neck and our tongue and our eyebrows. A few more. I love this aspect of yoga that it wakes up and balances out our body in such a way that it changes the way we do everything else. It changes life off the yoga mat and that's really why I've been so passionate about doing a little bit of yoga every day myself. It might just be three or five minutes. Okay, one more. Marvelous. And then just bring those feet into a comfortable distance, knees bent, and we're going to ragdoll. Just drape yourself. And once you're there, inviting you to get, just get organic. Uh, every time we move in kind of circles or sideways or diagonals, it benefits the body greatly. So take your body's instinct here, if you will, and go with it. You might wiggle your head around a little, give a little yes or no shake. And then when you're ready to come up, always, always, we want to drop our butt and press up using those powerful thighs. And again, deep engagement at that upper end and then prayer hands and relax those thigh muscles. So they're not in that active push, they're now just holding you upon the earth's surface with stability. Now let's go ahead and roll out wrists, roll out ankles. It's amazing how much uh, these parts of the body do for being so small, how they allow us to articulate and manage our body in space and move things. It's really quite, quite wonderful. Again, noticing if you've got a lot of tension in the arms or wrists, and if uh, being in any of our postures today aggravate that, make adjustments, go to forearms, and so on. For now, come into prayer hands. And if you can't have your forearms making a straight line across, fine, don't force it. But know that that, you know, unless you have like a, a past break or something in your wrist, um, that does indicate usually just being overly tight. And this would be a really good stretch to do. Uh, we're much less likely to tear something in this part of the body if we were to fall on our hand or something, if there's a looseness there that allows that 90 degree angle. And then I'm also going to reverse prayer hands. Now, for a lot of people, they won't be able to make that straight across forearm. So what you would do instead is make sure your shoulder heads are anchored, that you bring your palms together to lower down, like by your navel, and then draw the wrists up until you get to your edge, your stretch that's intense, uh, but that you can breathe into it. And then I love this additional stretch because um, I do a lot of work with my hands and they get really tight is bringing the palms apart, but while keeping the fingers connected. And that stretch always feels really good to me. And then I like to just wiggle them around again, kind of open and close and roll them out. Nice. So <clears throat> we're going to come into cow cat. Um, this is really a great pose. You know, if you're kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do on my mat today. You know, you're doing a quick little five minute warm up. Cow cat's always a great one for getting your spine beautifully warmed. So coming into on your flat of your palms, unless your wrists are bothering you, in which case you can go to fists. If you do, you want your thumb facing straight forward. That's what allows the shoulders to still be anchored down the back and that heart space to be broad. And then as you're ready, please inhaling and draw the heart forward, tailbone back, shoulder heads anchor. Is there more inhale? Don't cut it short. Exhaling belly to spine and powerfully stretch that back body, especially the area between the shoulder blades. Is there more exhale? Inhaling cow pose, elongating. Notice that I'm just letting my head kind of follow along with the spine. I'm not cranking it to look forward, which really compresses the, the neck. Uh, we don't want to do that. We're always trying to achieve the opposite. And cat back, oh, and again, getting inspired. You know, maybe you want to take your ribs a little left or right. That organic movement that the body might just say, oh yeah, I want that, which animals are so good at that. And as you're ready, continue a couple more rounds. Nice, soft, steady breath through the nose, unless, you know, if you're stuffy from allergies or what have you, and you need to breathe through the mouth, please do. Just try and sift the breath slowly. Slow, steady breath tells our nervous system, I am well, 
I am whole, I am safe. And last one, and we're going to all meet in cat back. And when you're there, I want you to pause and think very much about these abdominal muscles here and keep drawing them into the back body and even think about shortening the space between your hip bones and rib bones. So I'm, it's almost like doing a sit-up crunch, uh, but in your kind of cat back shape. I really want you to hyper tuck and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Breathe. Feel that deep squeeze. Try not to use your neck. And then very slowly extend into your stable table. So I'm keeping all that strength in the core, keeping it connected. And we can kind of test that out. Now that we're in table, just lift your right hand and left knee a little off the floor. And notice, if you stay pretty stable and you don't end up adjusting or collapsing, you've got some really good core support. Let's try the other side, left hand, right knee. You might, you know, sway a little bit. This is a balancing pose. But we, again, just don't want any collapse of the ribs, shoulder, or so on. All right. Again, now other side, inhaling, right hand, left knee and ever so slowly extending. Pause. Again, check and see if you've lost any of your stability. Breathe. Elongate through the back of the neck. I have to remind myself as well, because often I'll find I'm like, oh, a little short back there. Ever so slowly return to table. Control your descent. It's amazing how much good work that is. Okay. Inhaling, other side, left hand, right knee, and then extend. I'm flexing through my heel. My intention is to have my heel straight back, not coming up, which will actually tilt my pelvis out of alignment. I want to keep that same kind of slightly shortened core that gives me stability. Breathing. Pushing the earth away. You can also think about pushing the earth away with your floor hand such that your chest really comes up into the back also and then come back as slowly as you can. Whew, lovely. Let's roll out wrists and we're gonna come on to our back. We haven't done this at the beginning of practice for a while and I really like to throw that in sometimes. So grab your block if you've got it. Otherwise, you know, grab a thick book. Uh, could even be useful in this. And so we're just gonna simply plant our hips as if we're going into bridge. But I'm gonna lift my hips and place the block under the sacral triangle. So that's that bony triangle at the top of the crack of the butt. And what this does when I give my weight to it is it actually allows the low back. So I don't want the block in the low back at all. It's on that bony uh, triangle at the pelvis. But it allows the low back to kind of soften and relax and get kind of a um, tractioning is the best way I can think of it. It's always what it feels like to me is if I wanted somebody to kind of push on that part and reduce tension in the low back, then I would use the block. Uh, another option here is to extend the legs. And if you go to do that and it doesn't feel really good, then return to bent knees. But this offers a, a release through the psoas that can be wonderful. So taking a nice deep breath here. And it's worth just noticing, you know, if this area is really tight for you and you have been feeling some low back discomfort, there may and likely is a connection. This pushing away of the earth that we started with um, is actually really helpful also for reducing low back pain because it gets all of the other stabilizing and power muscles involved that should be working when we are carrying, you know, uh, water to plants or doing anything else. All right, when you're ready, remove that block, bring knees to belly, and a little side to side rocking. Good, and I'm gonna plant my feet now for reclined pigeon. So I'm gonna bring my right ankle onto left thigh, flex the feet and bring the whole deal towards the chest. So I'm gonna either hug just the right knee or I sometimes take my hand to the foot and give it a little extra drawing power. Shoulder heads are anchored and rotating hips a little to the left. Again, please get organic, let your body inspire you. And always breathing. And slowly releasing, we'll switch. 
So this is something we do sometimes at the beginning class, sometimes the end. Um, it's again another really good just daily shape or movement that can help our body unwind some of the tensions that we might have taken on uh, in our daily life. And sometimes it's activity, sometimes it's not enough activity that can really make the, the hips tight. Rotating a little to the right and be curious, is this side different? And slowly on back to center. Good, release and plant the feet for bridge pose. And as you're ready to go up into the pose, you wanna make sure that your shoulder heads are anchoring down the back, shoulder blades coming towards each other and imagine the block between the thighs. We did a big focus on that last week um, to help make sure that we're really using all of the right muscles that do create stability and strength. So you kind of imagine you're squeezing and then come down again as slowly as you can, controlling your descent. Good. Bringing knees to belly and we're gonna actually spinal rock uh, up to seated for a moment. I wanted to offer something um, that we haven't done together in a while, uh, but that can be just marvelous for really enlivening uh, the lower body and um, getting circulation going. And it's called a lymph rub. And so you're gonna actually be sit seated in kind of a loose butterfly. I've got my legs kind of in a diamond shape. And I'm gonna be massaging that line that is just inside of the shin bone. So if you're on the shin bone itself, that's hard. And then if you move to the inside towards the calf, there's kind of a soft valley. And that's where we want to be placing our pressure. So I'm going to just take my thumbs and be applying pressure to that valley and moving progressively up. And I'm kind of uh, kneading a little bit. So I'm not just poking into one spot. I'm kind of massaging along. And when I'm doing this, I want to make sure that the power that I'm applying uh, with my fingers is coming from the core. So not hunching over my work and shrugging. So shoulders are down, you can breathe deeply, use that core. And I kind of sometimes almost hinge to apply pressure and that just feels really natural to me. So, but find a version that feels good to you. And hopefully by the time you make it up towards the knee, you found something a little exciting. So I'm gonna invite you to go back down. If you're not getting anything, you're either in the wrong spot or you're not pressing hard enough. <laughs> you know, you don't want to bruise yourself, but you, you want to be willing to kind of get in there. This is not just a surface skin touch. You're actually applying pressure down into that valley. And I want you to go a little slower this time and then pause where you notice intensity. So I'm going to just pause right here and send breath and circulation in there. Good, and then go a little further till you find your next intense spot. And it's kind of amazing to notice the different qualities of sensation, right? It's not just, oh, it's intense. Sometimes it's hot, it's cold. Um, it might have a very particular pointed area or it might be broader. And going on and finding a third spot if you've got one. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna invite you to kind of just rub down with the thumbs both down that valley that you just rubbed and then also kind of down the calf muscle like so. So I'm just rubbing over the muscles at a pressure that feels good. Good, and then coming up, kind of give it a little rub the other way. Good, and I'm gonna release my legs and walk them on the floor here. And this is also, of course, we know good for moving lymph. Um, the lymph doesn't have its own uh, pump, if you will. It needs us to move. Um, in order for it to be pumped in the body. All right, and since we're sitting here already, let's give ourselves one last massage. You can take the legs out a little if that's more comfortable. Uh, you wanna be able to sit upright. And I'm just gonna take my fists like so. I'm just gonna pound into that IT band area. Um, this is an area that gets really tight on a lot of us without us really realizing it. And it can create a lot of discomfort in knees and hips. And that can affect how we move through the world and. Um, when we're walking along the earth, we might not be as uh, aligned or comfortable because these guys might be overly tight. We can then take our fingers and like kind of a gripping, and I'm just gonna use the four fingers to kind of reach into, again, there's kind of a groove uh, here along the side of the thigh, and you should be able to kind of 
just work your hands along into that groove. It takes a little bit of hand strength and depending on how hard that area is, that might be difficult. You can also rub something along it, but I really like this action of kind of, it's almost like plucking a large guitar string or something. And I find that to be really effective for my body. And you can start right at the connection above the knee. Awesome. All right. We're going to come on up to do some of our standing work. And I'm going to take us into our train tracks again today. We haven't done that for a number of weeks. Um, I hope it'll feel good to you. And if you haven't done it since the last time, it'll be interesting to see if maybe there's some change or if you've been practicing it regularly, I'm sure it's been evolving. So we're going to take our hands on our hips and I've got my feet maybe uh, six to eight inches apart. And we're going to want to keep the feet on those train tracks. So at no point am I bringing one foot behind like you would on a balance beam. Okay. So I'm keeping my hands on my hips for balance support, but also to make sure that I'm not letting my hips angle. I've got the headlights of my hip bones straight forward. And I'm going to just take my right foot back onto the ball of the foot, check those hip bones. And then I'm going to think about setting my right heel down into that train track. And when I'm landed, I'm going to pause and look underneath and see if it got in the track. And amazingly, mine did, but I've been working on this for a really, really long time. So when you come back upright, I want you to pause and notice, am I really upright and pushing the earth away, or am I a little bit hinged forward still? So take a moment and engage powerfully into the earth, press up through the crown, and think about broadening that heart space. And then we're going to add a little tricep work here. So flex the palms and press down into the earth, maybe back a little bit. You don't want to press too far back because it'll rotate the shoulder heads forward. All right. Couple more breaths. Just noticing as you push into the earth with that back leg. And also, hopefully, this front leg, you're staying rooted through the internal line of the foot. If your weight's rotating out to the outside, then try to replant that big toe and ball. And then we're going to come back. And when I return to neutral, if I've been there for this long of a stretch and I've really gotten something good, that leg feels a little rubbery. So that's a great sign that you're kind of reprogramming, waking some things up. All right, left foot steps back and we check the hip bones and slowly land that left heel and pause, look underneath, notice this one needed a little adjustment, but nothing like it used to. I actually wasn't able to get this foot to turn straight when I first started this practice about two years ago. And it has really transformed uh, a lot of the patterns of my body that were, were challenging. So it's been a really great and supportive practice for alignment and strength and balance and everything. So I'm going to check again, what does it take to really ignite the thigh muscle of this back leg? If you kind of think about trying to push your heel or your knee or your back of your thigh or hamstring into something. And then again, check that front foot is nicely anchored and root and reach through the spine. And if you'd like, add your tricep work. Breathing. Neck is relaxed, even though we're engaging upright. The body is actually designed for that effort. So when we're upright, the body takes on very little stress. It's only when we're leaning forward or back or sideways that the neck and the other parts of the spine and stuff end up working really hard. And return. And actually, it's all the soft tissue, of course, and muscles and so on that have to hold us when we're out of neutral alignment. Roll the ankles and wrists out a moment. We're going to do that one more time. So <clears throat> I want to urge you to really make sure those feet are going straight. And I think I'll just face you so you can see how it works in my body. So step back through that right foot. And I don't know how well you'll be able to see um, on the video or not, but a lot of people will have their foot, their heel slightly angled in and think that that's straight and it's not. So it might even feel almost like you're artificially turning your feet in. Um, but if you look at it, you should have a good visual on it that you want those toes straight forward, just like they were. All right. Adding your tricep work. Soft tongue, soft gaze. So even though parts of your body are working really hard, especially those thighs, you are in a state of peace and ease. 
hold, hold, notice, and return. And again, notice if that leg feels a little rubbery, a little weird, and step back with the other foot, lay it down on the train track the best you think you can, and then look beneath and notice. And again, I'm not having to adjust my feet very much, um, which is just amazing. But normally, again, most of us would have at least a little bit of a turn and would have to uh, adjust it, but I've been working this. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, feel free to add the arms or just hold them in that pressing position if you like. <coughs> Notice if you get any particular stretches on either side. Uh, when I first started doing this, uh, I got a stretch into each calf, but in a completely different position than each other. Um, and that tell, told me a lot of like some of the torque that was happening in my body. So we really want to notice where those stretches are showing up. A little note about that. If when you are one foot behind like that, if you're not getting any stretch at all, like in the calf or what have you, you can scooch your front foot a little further forward. So if uh, that applies to you, then you might want to change that, how you're doing it and just deepen your stance by scooching the front foot. Just again, make sure that it's not even a little bit leaning to the outside or this is not going to give you the full benefit that we're trying to get for you. All right, we're going to go straight into a warrior flow. We're going to use those powerful legs, both internal and external rotation. I'm going to take us from our standing crane, but if you want to pop in a downward dog and take your leg flying or what have you, remember this is your practice. Happy to have you just use this as inspiration and amend whenever you see fit. So I'm in Tadasana, powerful mountain stance, the basis for all standing postures. And this is a great place to practice pushing away, rooting and rising from the earth. And with that, that there's the ability to be soft in the neck while there's all this nice support and engagement. Inhaling when you're ready, sweeping out and up. And as you exhale, bring your hands to prayer. Lift that left knee, standing crane. Hold here a moment, long enough to challenge the balance and notice all that great proprioception happening in the foot and all the reactivity up the leg and hip. As slowly as you can, stepping back into crescent lunge. So we're on the ball of the back foot, hip bones shining forward. And express yourself. Maybe it's arms straight out. I like to think of this as the hug emoji. <laughs> Maybe it's into jet airplane arms. Maybe you're wanting to be up. Remember, up doesn't mean they have to be parallel. They might be up in a nice V if that feels good on your neck. And this is where we get to see how's that back leg doing? I'm going to once again talk to it, get it to go straight. Now, there's nothing wrong with bending it deeply and straightening it again. That can be wonderful practice. All right, one more long inhale. You might challenge your balance by gazing up. The attention is still in the rooting. Exhaling, transition, warrior two. Back foot comes flat 90 degrees. And I want to check that that thigh bone straight forward, reaching the arms out from the heart. Perhaps rotating the palms open for platter hands. And of course, you might see my breath is kind of rising and settling. That's great. We want the body again to be organic, to be influenced by the breath, to explore how perhaps on the exhale, I just feel like, oh, I can go a little deeper. Power from this back leg. So making sure, check and see if your back knee can straighten anymore. And you'll notice maybe you had it chronically bent, then you probably do when you're standing straight up as well. Inhaling, reaching up through that right arm. You can either leave the knee bent or straighten it. And then exhaling, bend it again for a lateral stretch. Pause, shoulder head anchoring, elbow to thigh. When you feel like you've got a really nice straight shape, including the head drawn back enough that you've got one long line from heel to crown, then go ahead and add that left arm. You can reach up at first and then overhead towards the wall in front of you to get that nice deep side body stretch. So again, I'm not just kind of letting gravity take me here. This is another one where I'm pushing the earth away. I'm pushing with the feet and I'm also 
going to make a line of energy from that heel through the crown and through the hand such that I'm like a suspension bridge and I don't need this arm at all. One more long inhale. You might look at your hand if you'd like a good balance challenge. And then exhaling, plant the hands and step back to your downward facing dog. If that's not an easeful way to do it for you, make your own journey. It could always come from cow cat. Intelligent hands, middle fingers forward, others wide. And then I'm just going to pedal and play a little bit here. This is, again, a great way to check out what's in the back leg, particularly in the lower leg, but some of us will feel this up into the hands as well. And if you take it out to the outer edges of your mat or even beyond, if you're on a surface that won't slip, you can do some nice pedaling that allows you to access a different stretch. It'll go to a different part of the leg. I can feel it in a totally different part of my calves on this version. All right, and then I'm going to return to the front of the mat for the other flow. If you want to go into dog series, you could. Otherwise, just making your journey, either walking the hands back to the feet or lunging or hopping forward. If you come into a position at the back of the mat, then just find your way forward. By the way, hopping, great leg exercise. And it's kind of fun. I remember realizing a number of years ago that it's almost impossible to hop, skip, or do jump rope without being happy. So it's a really good mood alter as well. All right, I've got my feet straight forward. And for those of you who this is an area of challenge, you're going to want to do a visual check on yourself each time. Finding your Tadasana once more and noticing. I hope that little flow affected your heart rate your temperature, probably sped up the breath a little, let's slow it back down best we can. And on a long inhale, root and rise, push the earth away with those powerful thighs. Exhaling prayer hands, right knee lifts, standing crane. And I've got yoga toes going, meaning my toes are peeling back. And that gives me a lot of Stability. If my foot is floppy, my leg will tend to be more floppy too. So I'm trying to ignite that and see if you can feel all that intelligence. Slowly stepping back to your crescent lunge. Steer those hip bones forward and pause. Breathe. Be here. Evaluating if you feel really stable. And if not, then noticing, hmm, what can I adjust? Sometimes it's that this thigh isn't working hard enough to root the inner line of the foot. That's key. Sometimes it's that I haven't ignited this back thigh muscle to straighten that leg as if I'm trying to push my heel into something. And going into any arm position that strikes you. It doesn't have to be what you used on the other side. Watching breath in the shape. And on the next inhale, sweeping up if you'd like a little balance challenge. Exhaling, open Virabhadrasana to warrior two. So again, I'm going to adjust and see hmm, how far forward can that front foot go and be in integrity. And am I losing any contact with that back foot or the effort from this back leg? Perhaps flatter hands. Hopefully your thigh is kind of heating up. See if you've got one more long breath here. And then a long inhale, exalted or reversed warrior. Left hand reaches up. Exhale, flow forward, lateral stretch. Again, pause to check your alignment. Most of us will need to intentionally draw the head back and stack that right shoulder, drawing the left rib cage up towards the right. And then when I feel like I'm super strong, rooting and reaching, I'll add that arm reaching overhead towards the wall in front of me. Noticing breath. Again, noticing you don't need that elbow and the thigh if you're using all these muscles just right. 
And when you are ready, you might send the gaze forward, challenge that stability, looking at your fingers. And release. Plant the hands and step back, downward facing dog. Option to go into a resting pose, hold downward dog, or join me in a dog series flow. So you're nice and warm by now. So inhaling to your plank, pause. I want you to make sure that you are, again, in that same pushing through the thighs such that you could actually kind of hop here. You can test that out. If your pelvis is hanging, that's really hard. You're going to feel heavy and weak. But if you've got that nice supported core that we did in stable table and the legs are active, you should be good. Big inhale. Exhaling, chaturanga. Remember, you can bend the knees if this is your first dog series today. I highly recommend it. Inhaling, cobra on the hips. Or if you would like, of course, you can always be in upward dog with the hips suspended. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, side. Good. I'm going to bring us all the way to our belly. You can do another plank to Chaturanga if you would like. Notice that Chaturanga does a wonderful job of working those triceps, uh, that same muscle we were working when we were flexing our hands during train tracks. So I'm going to invite us here in Jet Airplane. And this is another one where we can really practice activating that full elongated arm and the legs. So similar principles, even though we're not standing. So I'm going to tent my fingertips like so, like I'm holding a softball against the floor. And I'm going to make sure my shoulder heads are circling down and back so they're nowhere near the earth at all. And I'm going to kind of squeeze my upper arm in towards my ribs. That's going to make sure that I'm really activating through there. So I'm squeezing my upper arms in and then I'm reaching my fingers as far away from my shoulders as I can. And so I notice that just being in this position, I can feel the backs of my upper arms working. Power down through your pelvic triangle, so pubic bone and hip bone. And on your inhale, extending the spine and exhaling, return. And again, notice I'm keeping my neck long, so I'm actually looking at my yoga mat. You can pretend you've got a little love poem there from somebody that you'd like to read telling you how fabulous you are. And you might release the hands off the floor now, reaching for the wall behind. And if it doesn't bother your back to do so, invitation to add the legs. So they're reaching for the wall behind as well. Again, nothing is trying to come up so much as reach long, which brings it up a little bit. Good, see if you got one more. And release. Turn your head to the side. Relax those hard-working arms. <sighs> you can add a sighing breath anytime you'd like. We're going to press back to child's pose. So plant the hands. Anchor the pelvis. Shoulder heads anchor down. Yes, moving to our resting pose is actually an active process. So that when I press like so, I don't have any wings or shrugs. My elbows aren't coming out and my arms... My shoulders aren't shrugging. And come to rest with your butt near your heels. And just enjoy the experience of breath into the belly and then moving into the back. And again, notice any little inspiration from the body. Would it feel good to move a little side to side? Kind of just rolling from temple to temple. Sometimes we actually want to move our arms side to side. So I move them to the left, I get a nice stretch through the right side of my body. I move them to the right, I get a left body stretch. Or you might just be simply enjoying the stillness immensely. That's awesome. All right, and I'm gonna make sure I'm back to center before we move, and we're gonna tuck the tailbone to come on up. All right, we're gonna come into gate pose. And uh, it's kind of a fun balancing pose that really uh, shows us where we're not rooting. Actually, it's one of the reasons I, I want, chose that as our balancing pose today is because it is the mo one that will make it most obvious, reveal where our weaknesses are, if you will. And it's interesting because when I say weakness, it doesn't mean that you're not literally strong, but we might not be igniting those muscles that we need to make us stable in that pose. 
so gate pose we start in table and one of the the key things is the back leg so i want us to really take our time creating this pose even if you're familiar with it um i invite you to kind of go through the stages with me it's one thing that i love about yoga basics classes i take a little more time with some of that and sometimes even people have been doing the pose for decades find something new and that's my hope for you so first of all find a stable table again and that's where we were we got there by going into kind of a powerful cat back and really working that core so that when we came into table we weren't collapsing or hanging on the joints right and one way to check that is like you know can i clap um you know can i lift one limb or two limbs and not feel a change from there take your left foot and step back and I'm going to look underneath to see that my right hand, right knee, and toes are all pointing at my left heel. You don't want the foot further forward. Um, well, you might because it makes the balance easier. <laughs> but if you're wanting to, to get the whole challenge of this pose, uh, then place it there. And you want to pause and push right now like you've got something under the blade of that back foot. I want you to kind of use all of this strength to push there. And that's the amount of engagement you want to maintain. Before we do anything else, look at your right hip and thigh bone, and I wanna squeeze my right hip towards that left edge of the mat until my thigh bone comes straight up and down. So if you can see it angling, it means your hip is actually out behind you, out behind your center of gravity. We don't want that. So squeeze that, and you should feel kind of a nice clicking in at the thighs and pelvis, like you're just really stable. Then take your left hand to your left hip, and remember to re-push into that back leg. Good, another thing to check is that we haven't shrugged that right shoulder and that we're gonna now send the ribs up just like we did in lateral stretch. And when you're ready, take the left arm up. I turn my head down, usually it's just easier on my neck, but you can look up at the sky if you want more challenge. And now let's just see if you put all of your weight into that back foot can you release your right knee? And can you, if you really want extra challenge, bring it in front of you? It's a lot on your wrist, so the answer may be, I don't wanna. <laughs> and come on down, good. Roll out that wrist, we ask a lot of it. And we'll go into the other side. So what's fun is once you get good with this part, the stability and balance, then you can add all kinds of stuff. So find stable table. Take the right foot back, watching, checking, rooting, taking the left hip and sending it towards the right edge of the mat. And you can see how that kind of lifts my right hand. So you can kind of feel how it shifts and makes the body want to open up into the pose, right? So you can bring the hand to the hip first to check your head alignment, shoulder that it's anchored, that the rib cage is coming up. But whenever you're ready, send that arm on up. Again, check that that back leg is straight. If it's bending at all, which a lot of people do, it's interesting. Um, if it's bending at all, your, your balance is harder. But that a lot of times people will bend and shrink in because they feel unstable. And what we actually have to do is root and reach. And again, if you'd like to lift that lower knee, maybe bring it forward. That's an add-on option. And we don't want to do it if you have to kind of collapse the pose to do it. Um, so don't be greedy <laughs> and then again love up those those wrists so I sometimes just rub them in the long run this is really good for strengthening our wrists such that if we do fall we're much less likely to break or hurt something um, but we have to of course allow what the body um, will or take what the body will allow us to do that pose is very hard to do in that fist position that I had recommended as a wrist alternate because you just have nothing to balance with right you don't have the breadth of your fingers. We're going to close with just one last um, active posture, which is our bridge, and I'm going to offer yoga mudra. And I don't often talk about this aspect of the pose very much because not everyone can do yoga mudra um, at all or specifically in bridge. So yoga mudra is where we're intertwining the hands. Mudra just means hand position. And in this position, they are intertwined fingers and then we're straightening the arms and if you're someone who can't straighten the arms you know just even like so um, it's going to be harder to do in this position 
but it's also for great effort and they don't have to get straight you will be trying to loosen the bicep and tighten and strengthen the tricep right so it's really really great practice and i'll show you what i mean and you can join in of course anytime that you are ready so we want to make sure our feet are flat and in kind of those train tracks that i'm anchoring through the inner foot and first i'm just going to work my shoulder blades under and press up i'm going to pause just like we did at the beginning of our practice when we did it and kind of notice am i squeezing my thighs do i feel good and stable then i'm going to try and walk my shoulders underneath me more which brings my hands closer together and see if i can intertwine them and if i can but they're kind of bent the hands are up off the floor fine you're going to join us in the effort now to press the pinkies towards the floor and to press the knuckles towards the heels and if this is just awkward it's you know ouchy you can't breathe your shoulders are hurting or something let it go and do the original arm position we started with otherwise right here power down through the whole length of the arm send the hips up and breathe deeply into the chest one more is there more and if this is feeling good you're at a good edge take a few more breaths there when you do come down again do it with great control and come into any counter shape you'd like it might just be knees to belly spinal rocking maybe you're hungry for a little happy baby or straddle or half straddle these are all marvelous uh, ways to kind of recover from all of that hip effort that you get in that pose all right we are going to come into one last little bridge to add leg extension so as you're ready come up just keep the hands on the hips here and slowly extend one leg at a time and what i want to point out is that this pose and the train tracks are a really interesting kind of complement to one another um, they can teach us a lot about the uh, other pose and what's going on but also help kind of balancing out some of the same issues so when I have my leg extended, if my toes are turning out, that's probably something uh, that is going to show up in, jet, in um, train tracks as well. So it usually means that there's, again, an over tightness somewhere and a weakness somewhere else. And I talked a lot about that uh, inner outer and stuff last week. So if you're kind of curious to know more about that, you might decide to pop back and do last week's videos as well. So just noticing when you are complete, just come into any resting shape you'd like. If it's just settling into your corpse pose, or maybe you need knees to belly again, um, feel free to, to just get very comfortable there. So what I've asked you to notice as you're kind of scanning your body in whatever position you're taking is, do you feel any um, side to side significant difference? So when you're extending your legs just now, like we did, did you feel one hip dropping? Did you feel um, a lot of intensity, you know, either uh, hopefully not pain, but like kind of just more intense effort or challenge, I guess, for the one butt cheek or leg. Um, usually it's the one that you were standing on at the time that would be having the challenge. Um, and that can be a really good clue trail for us that there probably is some imbalance in strength and in tightness um, throughout some combination of the legs and the hips. And if so, train tracks is one of the things that can help um, shift that imbalance. And together, it's a really great combination. Again, these two poses complement each other. Um, so anyway, have fun exploring that. And if you noticed some stuff today, take these two poses and do them once a day for the next few days and see how they change. Uh, literally in under three minutes, you could do those two things very easily, along with a few others thrown in for good measure. So um, I often have people ask me, you know, what's more important, doing a little yoga every day or getting an hour long class? And I actually say, if I had to only have you pick one, I would say do a little yoga every day. When you think about, again, all the ways that we are moving through the world, uh, walking and, uh, you know, doing actual outdoor work um, and so on, if we train our body to do all those things so that they are in ease and they're using all the right stuff 
we're just going to take on less stress, right? Our joints aren't going to wear out as fast. Um, we're going to be in less pain and discomfort because again, our muscles aren't going to be struggling in out of neutral. Um, it's really a, a fascinating thing to consider how much of our discomfort and uh, disharmony in our body is simply from not moving through the world in what is our proper mechanical alignment that we're designed for. Uh, so it's just kind of a fun different lens to put on and a way to think about it. I am so grateful that you came to the mat today and I encourage you if you've got um, something close to like a relaxed state going on right now, just hang out there for a while, right? Um, just because I'm going to ohm and sing the bowl for you does not mean that you have to get up and go do a thing. So just notice that if your mind is chattering away at you, but your body is like, oh, this feels really good. Stay here for a few minutes, please. Let it integrate. If you'd like to join me in ohms, please do. It can be lovely to have your hands on the body so that you can feel the vibration. And if you're on the floor laying down, you can really feel the vibration between the floor and your body, like a sounding board for an instrument. Let's find that long spine and gather that first long inhale. Uh... Shanti, Shanti. Om, peace, peace. Namaste. you have a wonderful, wonderful week. Join me again on Thursday if you would like uh, this integrated into flow. It'll be a lot of fun.